We're going to focus this morning on <clears throat> several verses at the end of the verses I'm reading. I'll start off with verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right. But in the King James, it says the power, the power or the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Now, let's start reading on John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it's the beginning. We're talking John understands through revelation the beginning of everything. Jesus was in the beginning of everything. One of the things I learned in graduate school, which was banged into my head by one of the professors there, was Jesus is coexistent, get a hold of this, and co-eternal with God the Father. Coexistent, co-eternal. Those were two words that he, he banged into our heads just so that we would understand where Jesus fit in the whole system. He's everything. He's everything. <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, okay? And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. You are here because God wanted you to be here. There is nobody on this earth that's a mistake. Nobody's a mistake. They're here because God wants them here. Creativity came through Jesus. Created everything. Everything. Now, that was a revelation to John. God, God showed him that, that Jesus created everything. Apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life. Now, this is a big subject for John, life. It was in him was life, in Jesus. And the life was the light of men. Salvation, knowing Jesus, is light. The revelation of God, it's the light of men. And then he goes on to explain why God did that. The whole thing is an explanation. Apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was the life, the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness... The darkness is this world, and the darkness did not comprehend it, did not comprehend it, but here's the thing, an even better explanation, did not overpower it. The darkness will never overpower the light. Amen. Doesn't matter what goes on in the state of Rhode Island or in the city of Providence, or in the suburbs, it will never be overpowered by darkness. Light is going to triumph. Say hallelujah. Okay? They didn't comprehend it. Now, the comprehend it means you, you grab it with your mind. But really, the original said overpower. And I like that word better because it's stronger. The darkness is not going to overpower it. It didn't comprehend it, and it didn't overpower it. God is not going to allow Satan to overpower the light. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Sometimes in your life you feel like you're being overpowered. It's true. You know, certain tests, certain things in life make you feel like you're going to be overpowered. You're not going to be. We're going to overpower him. We're overpowering the darkness. The darkness is not overpowering the light. We are the light of the world. Amen. So he talks about these themes. Light, life. All of this goes together. What is it? 
And then he gets down to explaining it chapter by chapter. It's knowing Jesus. It's knowing Jesus. It's having a relationship with Christ Jesus in your life, in your heart. That's what it's all about. All right. Follow along with me here. We haven't arrived at the punchline yet, but we're getting there. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Darkness did not overcome it or comprehend it. Didn't understand it. That's true. Six, there came a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, when you read that verse, there came a man sent from God whose name was John. It looks like John just showed up on the scene, which he did. He was sent there by God. He shows up on the scene of life in the Jerusalem area. But in, if you read the original, it says, came into being. That's, that changes the whole meaning here. John came into being to be a witness about Jesus to get the world ready to receive him. Came into being. God created John for that heavenly reason. Came into being. Now, let's, put, let's place all of us in that context. We all came into being. That's what he's talking about here. You came into being. I came into being. You didn't really understand life or have an understanding of what life was until you began to think a little bit. Who am I? How did I get here? Why am I here? And he's explaining all of that. He said, John came into being. He showed up, but he came into being because God sent him here. And then he says, he was a witness. And the truth is, we're all witnesses. We have all come into being to be a witness. Now, you don't really come into being until you meet Jesus. You have a physical life, but you don't have a spiritual life. And the life that he's talking about here is not physical. It's never been. The life that John's talking about is spiritual. Totally spiritual. And you will come into being and into real life when you really get a relationship with Jesus. Come on. This is real. This is reality. This is reality. Knowing Jesus becomes the reason for your existence. And then he talks about why John is here to be a witness. And we're going to get into that, which is really what God has called us all to be, a witness. A witness for the truth. A witness. Come on, hold on to this. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there came a man sent from God into being. He came into being from God, whose name was John. He came for a witness, okay, that he might bear witness of the light, that all men, that all might believe through him. Now, notice that, that all might believe through him. That's God's desire. That's God's reason for sending John and for sending Jesus. That's his reason, that all might believe. But are all going to believe? No. Just works that doesn't work that way. But God wants everybody to believe. That's his will. That's his eternal purpose and will to see the world saved. Say hallelujah. All right. Glory. <clears throat> that he might believe through him. Eight. He was not the light. Now the apostle John makes sure that you understand that John the Baptist was not the light. But he came, his reason for existence, he came that he might bear witness of the light. That's all of us. That's all of us. We come into being through Jesus Christ, through an experience with God, and we're here to be a witness. To be, you know, to be a witness somewhere, somehow, some way, to be a witness. And your life has to be different than the world's. It has to be. Amen. <clears throat> there was this true light which coming into the world enlightens 
every man. As it came into the world, Jesus came into the world, he brought a light of revelation. A light of revelation. Remember in Isaiah, I think it said, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. He's a light of revelation. And we shine that light. Hallelujah. Enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Imagine that. Walked up and down the streets of Jerusalem, walked all over the trails and all over the roads uh, from northern Israel, Galilee area, down to Jerusalem, down to central Israel, down to southern Israel, walked all around. Hundreds of miles they walked. That's what they did. They used to walk about 10, 15 miles a day and then sleep out outside somewhere, wrap up in their coat. And uh, he was in the world and he made the world and the world did not know him. That's one of the saddest statements in the word of God. It was in the word, in the world, and the world did not comprehend him, understand him, or know him. They didn't realize who he was. The creator of the world. They didn't recognize him. Okay, let's continue here. <clears throat> there was the true light, and he said, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. And the next one is even a sadder statement. He came to his own, his own people, okay? His own domain, his own people, his own uh, family. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. Okay? They didn't receive him. <clears throat> it took a while for his own family to receive him, to understand who he was. And even then, it was very difficult. Because how many of you understand, in a family, there's a thing called sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry. Who does he think he is? Okay? He's like the rest of us. No, he's not. No, he's not like the rest of us. Uh, Joseph went through the same thing with sibling rivalry. He had the hand of God on him at an early age, at a very early age, probably 13, 14, 15 years old. He was prophetic. He had dreams, and God was showing him things. And uh, those dreams and that, that prophecy, that gift that he had, got him into trouble. Got him into deep trouble because of sibling rivalry. His brothers hated him. His father loved him. <laughs> and the more his father loved him, the more his brothers hated him. <laughs> and all of a sudden, his father one day says, Joseph, come on in the tent. I got something for you. And he gives him this fancy jacket, many colors on this jacket, many colors. And when he took it outside and he walked around, the older brothers got really mad, really mad. He was showing off. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Look what daddy gave me, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, they started to hatch a plot now, I'm not going to preach on Joseph, but similar things were happening in Jesus' life. He was trying to be normal, but you couldn't be normal if you were Jesus. You just couldn't be. And his mother recognized who he was. And like all good Jewish mothers, she gave him a shove. Do what my son tells you to do. If he says fill the water pots, fill them. Don't think, just do it. That's right. You know? <clears throat> but all of that came in the plan of God. But the problem is, the world didn't receive him, and even the people in his hometown didn't receive him. They didn't receive him. They didn't. And some of his family had a hard time with it. But eventually, everybody in his family came on board. Say hallelujah. They knew who he was, and they accepted it, and they became really the foundation of the Christian church. That's what they became. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
God always has a remnant. When things don't look good, remember that God always has a remnant. There will always be a remnant in God. All right? Back to the Word. Okay. <clears throat> he came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him, which is worse than verse 10 where it says the whole world didn't receive him. But as many, now here's the punchline, but as many as received him, to them he gave the power or the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Even to those who believe in his name. The second major covenant God was involved with here was a whosoever will may come. Whosoever will may come. Now that doesn't take away the promises that God makes to the family. He doesn't. Those are all included in that. But this is a much broader, much bigger, comprehensive plan that God has for the whole world. He wants to build a relationship with the whole world. Whosoever will may come. So as many as receive. Now this word, in this word receive, when you take something, there's an element of faith involved here. There's faith. When you receive, you automatically believe. Anytime you have received anything, you have operated or exercised your faith. You receive, you reach out, you take it. Your faith is in operation. Your faith is in operation. Your faith is in operation. So he says, to as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the right, and I'm going to go back to the King James, the power to become the sons of God. One of the biggest lies the devil speaks to his people, to our people, is you'll never make it. You can't do it. You can't do it. But the Bible says, to as many as received him, to them he gave the power or the right to become the sons of God. All you have to do is receive. The rest is God's going to do for you. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is receive and believe. Believe and receive. That's all. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to understand a thing. You just got to receive it and believe it. Come on. Let's get into this now. This is a pretty simple gospel. This is a pretty simple package God put together for everybody, for the whole world. This is pretty simple. Nothing complicated about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's totally inclusive of the whole world. Woo! Come on, put your hands up. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a part of any group, any church, any ethnic group, anything at all. All you got to do is believe and receive. Say hallelujah. All you have to do is believe and receive. Amen. Glory to God. So as you receive Jesus, as you receive him, and you begin to walk with him, God has already made a decision that you're going to make it. I can't make it. I can't stop doing this. I can't stop smoking. I can't stop uh, watching something that's bad. No, that's, that's, forget all of that. That's a lie from the pit. That's a lie. You're going to stop because God's going to make you make it. Say hallelujah. He'll give you the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Now, Let's talk about family life because he's using the word son here. Let's talk about family life. Family life. Usually, you're born into a family or you're born, of course, you're born, come into existence as, a, as an infant. As an infant. As an infant, you don't know anything. As an infant in Christ, you don't know anything either. You just know enough to believe. That's all. That's all. That's it. You just know who Jesus is. Jesus is God. That's good enough. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not in the business of complicating things. He's not. And so as you grow and grow in God, you become more and more of a son in the gospel. 
Paul calls all the people that he worked with, he calls them my son in the gospel. Timothy, my son. It wasn't his physical son. It was his son in the gospel. But he grew. And God expects you to grow. Amen. To grow into the person that he's dreamed about, that he wants to see you be. Hallelujah. God has a plan for every single person in this building today. He's got a plan for you. Come on, put your hands up. You may not have a plan, but he's got one. I run across a lot of people that they don't know what up from down, where they're going, who they are. I'm not even sure if they want to be alive. But if you're alive, God's got a plan for you. Say hallelujah. Come on, put your hands up. Hallelujah. Now, the fact that God has a plan for you, for your life, makes you valuable. Makes you valuable. Amen. You have a reason for being. You have a plan. God has a plan for you. And you have to find out what the plan is. The beginning of the plan is in the book. It's all in the book. It's all in the book. And we're going to talk up. we're finishing up with that today. Being a witness. Just whatever you do, wherever you go, being a witness is the number one thing in the plan. Then there are other things. Get married, have a family. Yeah, all that. Go to work, careers. Yes, all of that. But number one, it's being a witness. It's being a witness. Amen. Glory. Amen. All right. Back to the book. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but as many as received him, as you receive him, you do it in faith. As you receive Jesus, you do it in faith. To them he gave the right to become the children or the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a privilege. What a privilege. As you accept Christ, you become children of God. A child of God. I don't know who I am. I'm not sure what's going on in my family. Forget all that. You become part of God's family. You become part of God's family. Put your hands up. If you've got an identity crisis going, we can solve that right now. Become part of God's family. Become part of his family. He makes a decision to love you right off the bat. Right off the bat. He loves you. Hallelujah. What incredible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Incredible. Here's a little secret. Human beings can't really love something really truly until you know it, until you understand it a little bit. God understands everybody. There are billions of people on this earth, billions and billions, and he knows every one of them by name. He knows their name. Hallelujah. What a miracle. Say hallelujah. He knows their name. He knows your name. He knows my name. He knows that we're sitting right here in East Providence on a Sunday morning, the Lord's day in the Lord's house. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Glory to God. And he wants you to feel good about it. See, when you know that you're loved, you feel secure. You feel secure, you know? I used to see that when I was a kid in public school. Kids would get in trouble, and they, the teachers would yell, and how they, you know, hey, who cares? My mother loves me. That's good enough, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God loves you. That's why he's chosen us. Amen. All right. Back to the book. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Children of God. What, what a incredible miracle. Even to those who believe. There it is. Remember I said receiving is believing. Even to those who believe in his name. You can't receive Jesus until you believe. You can't. When you receive, you automatically believe. Say hallelujah. You, nobody explains it to you. It just works that way. When you receive it, you believe it. All right. <clears throat> 13. Now, these children of God, he's going to explain. He explains who they are right here. These children of God, that's all of us, verse 13, <clears throat> who were born not of blood, 
or the flesh, really, he's talking about, begotten not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, meaning parents deciding they want to have children, nor of the will of man, but of God. This birth, this new birth, has to do with the will of God. Come on, this is powerful. This is powerful. God has always wanted to increase his family. I'm getting a little nervous now. Billions of people in China, billions of people in India. God knows all about it. And then we have the New World Order boys that are telling us we'll never have enough food. Don't worry, God's got that figured out already. Never going to be enough air to breathe. Never going to be enough water to drink. Don't get into all that. That's all fear. I'm not saying you don't have to think about it once in a while. But God wants you to understand he's going to take care of you. Say hallelujah. You're part of the family of God. If you're part of his family, he's looking after you. He's going to look after you. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. So you join God's big worldwide family. And when you get in there, you find out that everybody doesn't look like you. There's other people in this family that look different. How is that? It's God's family. Say hallelujah. It's all God's family. Amen. Amen. And he is willing and decided to be father of us all. Woo, come on. That's powerful. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Father of everybody. Amen. Now, he's the father of everybody that received Jesus. He's the beginning of all creation. But there's an interesting verse in the New Testament where Jesus encounters, okay, the Pharisees. And you know what he says to them? You are of your father, the devil. That's what he says. What was he saying? My father's God. I know who my father is, but you don't know who your father is. I know who my father is. That's right. That's powerful. That's powerful. And in order to grow in Christ, you have to know who your father is. Amen. Say, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Your father can do anything. Your father has a big plan for you, and you've got to get hooked into his plan. Don't worry. I was just dealing with my grandson the last few weeks. He's got his own plans, and I said, God's got his plans. Well, I don't like I said, well, in a little while, you'll find out that his plan's better than your plan. After you get beat up a few times, get, you know, knocked around a little bit, you'll decide, well, maybe God's plan is pretty good. You know, that's right. It is. God's plan is always better than yours. Say hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Yes. God has a plan for us all. Amen. Back to verse 13 here. We were born not of, the, of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. <clears throat> you were born according to and by the will of God. That should make, and I want everybody to go home feeling good today. That should make you feel real good. Real secure. God wants you to feel secure. I don't care what the devil does or what he says or what's going on. You can, God is your father. God is going to take care of you. Hallelujah. God is going to watch over you. Hallelujah. Whatever situation you find yourself, God is going to take care of you. You are God's children. You have been born according to the will of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's stand up and worship the Lord.